thank you for having me. And of course, it's it's really nice to to be part of this event uh, to celebrate uh, Dirk's uh, 60th birthday. Um, I wasn't sure whether I should start maybe with some some anecdote because somehow uh, I was I was Dirk's PhD student. And uh, I was thinking about something that was not too, too personal to, to tell. So I think in general, I, I would say being a PhD student or having been the PhD student of uh, Dirk was a very nice experience in the sense that he, he gave me a lot of freedom, a lot of uh, time also to pursue the ideas uh, and collaborations that I wanted to do. Nevertheless, I should say, for instance, there was this experience, I don't know, one or maybe two years into the PhD, things had not really taken much, uh, had not made much progress. He stopped me then at IHS in the, in the entrance hall and uh, asked me where I was with my work. And he uh, essentially just said, okay, well, if, if there's not more, then you just finish with a nice summary of your work. Obviously this made me thinking and it was a good, a good push in the right direction. Another, uh, I would say, nice, nice and really positive anecdote was once when I was, uh, before we had our first paper written, that he came to my office and I was really lost in, in some computations that simply didn't work out and they were at the blackboard and he just moved in. Again, was asking how things were going and looked at the blackboard and I do not know how pointed at the right place saying I should redo these calculations. And indeed it turned out that uh, that something was very wrong there and uh, it worked out. And uh, and so we, we had our first paper. And so in total, I would say it's it was a very positive experience with, uh, with a, good, uh, a good feeling. Um, about my work, okay, now I should, um, I'm getting my emails, maybe I should stop this, but I don't know how. Um, Okay, so it's about big products and combinatorial Hopf algebras. Uh, I think uh, one of the, the great uh, impulses that came out of Dirk's work is this topic of combinatorial Hopf algebras and trying to find and to understand structures uh, in terms of combinatorial Hopf algebras. And uh, jointly with uh, Frederic uh, Patras and Nicolas uh, Tapia and Lorenzo Zambotti, we we started to, to understand big products or big polynomials uh, using combinatorial Hopf algebras. And uh, to, to summarize maybe, or to kind of give an idea of where I want to go with this talk, I should say, so what is the aim? Okay, the aim is to understand relations between uh, different families of uh, big polynomials in non-commutative probability. So this is of course uh, a lot of information here. First of all, there's not only one, family of big polynomials, but there are several commutative probability theory, of which I'm not an expert. So I will, I will, I will not try to really uh, explain this since this would, uh, would probably take too much time and uh, it's not really the point. It's, I will try to take a combinatorial perspective or algebraic perspective on the, the issue and then uh, try to explain uh, somehow what it means to have different families of, of uh, big polynomials. The setting, well, the setting is the one of what's called non-commutative shuffle Hopf algebras. And uh, they're also known as uh, Denry form algebras, but I, I think this is, is a better way of, of uh, talking about this uh, structure. And this is, an example for a combinatorial Hopf algebra connected uh, graded uh, Hopf algebra with some extra structure. Now, uh, I decided to already make it clear here at this point that those different uh, families of big polynomials, um, they are part of this, this theory of non-commutative probability that somehow um, I think essentially goes back to uh, Voiculescu. Uh, those polynomials appeared in work uh, by uh, Michael Ancelevich around uh, 2004 and 2009, but uh, I think in a series of three papers, but in a very different way they are uh, understood there in terms of so-called generating function calculus or non-commutative generating functions. And one aspect of our work was to really find a different way, a Hopf algebraic way, 
to to deal with these uh, weak polynomials and in fact then to to use this to to understand them better and in fact uh, one outcome of this work is that these different weak polynomials are related i will try to indicate this uh, at the end okay so uh, let me start with the classical case so those um, big polynomials that uh, you probably all know from uh, either probability or uh, say quantum field theory i take this very algebraic point of view so i try also to approach them maybe in a somewhat uh, unconventional way so i start with a commutative unital associative k algebra this is usually the algebra of my say random variables i take uh, phi to be a linear unital form then i look at the uh, augmented tensor algebra. So I start with uh, in degree one, so I skip the, the unit. And if I want to talk about the tensor algebra with unit, I uh, put a bar above it, okay? Now on this um, uh, algebra with concatenation as product, I can put a, a co-product, the so-called unshuffle co-product that is defined here. Here I take this, uh, way of looking at it uh, in terms of uh, choosing subsets of my index set one to n. Then I associate with this subset uh, a word in this form here. I can I have the natural order on those elements that I, I take out. And, um, and then I, I put on the left the corresponding word from the, the letters that I've taken out according to the subset S. And on the other side, I put the rest. So which means I, I, I simply extract letters, sequences of letters, put them on the left. And what is left over, I just simply concatenate and have it on the right. Another way would be to say, okay, that Delta as it is a, a morphism is um, for each letter is a, is a primitive element. And so with this so-called unshuffle uh, co-product, uh, I can define on the dual side, uh, a shuffle product. This is a shuffle product on the linear maps over the over the tensor algebra. That's what I have defined here, which is defined in terms of this uh, co-product. And then I uh, take my linear map phi that was defined over my uh, original algebra A, and I extend this uh, onto the uh, 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 tensor algebra with unit by simply saying, okay, if phi see the word with uh, n letters, then what I mean is in fact, uh, my uh, uh, script phi, I think script, or little phi evaluated on the product of the entries in this word. So this is, if you want a moment for instance, right? This is, uh, I take, um, I should, I should take, uh, This is a linear map. It's, it's, it maps the unit of the uh, tensor algebra to one. And so it's invertible. And for this, we can find another linear map that uh, maps the unit of the tensor algebra to zero, such that phi can be written as an as an shuffle exponential. Now, everything here is seen somehow in the dual over the tensor algebra. So this is the shuffle product I have defined up here. This is this particular map C that essentially is characterized by mapping the unit to zero. And so I have expressed this uh, uh, new phi here as a shuffle exponential. Now it turns out that if you uh, compute, if you compute, um, if you apply this shuffle exponential, so the exponential here is of course uh, defined in the usual uh, way. So if you apply this, you simply follow the rule of doing this uh, uh, deshuffling or unshuffle uh, co-product on the word. It turns out with a couple of steps in between that you can give a very nice and elegant uh, expression for this, uh, uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, for this co computation. So you find in fact that uh, phi of a one times a n equals a sum. The sum here is coordinated by set partitions, all set partitions uh, of order n. And then you take uh, the product over the blocks and you evaluate the map C over the, the, the subsequence or the subword 
according to the elements in the block uh, PI. Okay, so this is what you find if you do this computation using uh, the unshuffle co-product uh, structure available here. Now, uh, when you then think a little bit about this, then you see in fact uh, that if you give these things names, so I call those images of the, say in a single letter here to, to make it simple, I call those MN, this is the uh, image of say uh, letter A and the nth uh, tensor power of it. And the same for C applied to the nth tensor power, I call this uh, kappa N. Then I take this um, exponential uh, generating function where I put all those MNs here. The same for the C for the kappa Ns. And then in fact, if I equal this, so if I want this to be equal, then I find a way to express my uh, uh, moments in terms of what then I would like to call classical cumulants. So the, the first moment equals the, the first cumulant, the second moment equals the, the second cumulant plus the product of the first two cumulants. Then you have the, the third moment expressed as a, as a polynomial in the cumulants up to order uh, three. And at order four, uh, you find this expression here. And maybe, I guess many have seen this already. For us at this point to, to get this um, maybe a connection with, with the non-commutative side of the picture. The interesting coefficient here is this three that appears here. As we will see in the, in the non-commutative world, uh, it disappears. There will be then just the two because we lose one partition if you go there. You can also look at this um, uh, in terms of a recursion given here with this binomial coefficient. And in fact, this is also uh, nicely related to in fact, uh, the substructure of the, the shuffle algebra structure the, that I just uh, stated that uh, I, I plan to return to when, when we come to the commutative uh, side of the picture. Um, okay, so now let's simply uh, move forward and uh, and define what I would like to call the, uh, what in this case would be the so-called tensor Vic polynomials. They become the classical Vic polynomials um, uh, if I evaluate them in elements from my uh, original algebra A. But so for the moment, it's simply defined as I take the identity as a map over the, the tensor algebra. And I essentially convolute this with uh, the inverse of my uh, uh, map phi. Okay, so this is the convolution. I've written it here explicitly using the unshuffle uh, co-product. Then what you can show is, so if I have this polynomial, which is a polynomial in the tensor algebra, so it's words with certain coefficients, the coefficients given in terms of the inverses of phi evaluated at, at, at subwords of the word that I'm looking at, then I essentially find the unity, which means it's it's uh, zero all, essentially all the time if, if I evaluate this on a non-trivial word. And I have also this uh, particular property here that if I define this uh, derivation that simply kills the, the, the letter A in the word, one has to be a little bit careful here how to define this, but uh, I will, I will return to this later on when we have something very similar in the non-commutative uh, setting. Uh, I have this intertwining relation. So if I compute my uh, 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 tensor big polynomial, as I want to call them on the word, and then I look for the letter A and I kill this, then this is essentially the same as first looking for the word in the original, for, for the letter A in the original word, and then computing the uh, the big polynomial of it. Um, so these are the, the, the tensor Vick uh, polynomials. And uh, in fact, I can invert them in terms with respect to composition simply by defining it uh, in this way here. And uh, also if you if you simply evaluate, you look for the the only uh, the constant term in the inverse of this, then it's just phi of the word. So here are the first few uh, polynomials up to order uh, three. 
So you can also nicely see here that if you evaluate, so if you apply phi uh, to this expression here, then this is zero. This is true for all the other uh, expressions as well. Again, uh, maybe as a hint on what's interesting here is say up to order three is again this uh, particular coefficient that that will change when we when we come to the strictly non-commutative uh, setup. So and um, as I said, um, these are the tensor big polynomials. So if I really want to have the big polynomials as they are stated in, 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 in many books, then I would really evaluate this this tensor uh, polynomial in in the algebra A. So I would really start to multiply uh, in the algebra A. And then um, those properties that I just stated for the uh, for the big polynomials is particular intertwining with this uh, abstract derivation after a letter in the tensor algebra just means that these polynomials have this uh, two properties here and uh, which I think makes them what's called an apple, or somehow apple polynomials. Um, maybe as a as a remark, why maybe this this uh, to start with this uh, identity convoluted into the inverse of uh, my phi is, is was a good idea. If I look at this what one would call normal ordered or big ordered exponential, which is simply a generating function for the uh, uh, Vic polynomials, then in fact, uh, one can show that uh, this can be given uh, uh, this expression here. It's simply the exponential TA here, in my uh, parameter T. And then I uh, simply subtract the, the generating function for my uh, cumulants, which is nothing but saying that I take the exponential TA divided by my moment series and the moment series I express uh, as the exponential of the, the cumulants. And so I find this expression here, which is roughly something like phi inverse times, okay, the exponential. But uh, here we also talk about uh, all the big polynomials put together into this generating series. Uh, as, an, as a remark, I will also repeat later on, since it's it's, it's something that holds through also in a non-commutative setting. Uh, since I can invert my Vic polynomials or tens of Vic polynomials, I can define, in fact, a new product on the, on the tensor algebra defined like this. So here, this is the ordinary uh, concatenation. I take my two words, then I compute the inverse Vic polynomials, I multiply in the tensor algebra, and then I take the Vic uh, the big polynomial of the resulting uh, expression. This I define a new product. And this product has this uh, nice uh, property that if I take big polynomials, say with respect to the, the letter A of defined like this, and this is the big polynomial of the product of A and with A M in the tensor algebra. So usually this big product has, has awkward uh, properties, but I can define a new product such that I have these nice uh, properties here. Kurush, uh, we have a question from Ralph. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, just a very quick one. So you say that this is the uh, time ordered product in your formula. Is, is that obvious? I mean, I can take your formula as a definition, but if I usually you have some exactly some time order. Can you say one more word why, why this is uh, given by dividing out by these uh, cumulants? Or is that um, uh, Sorry, uh, here this is the normal ordered product, right? Yeah. This is, for me, this would be the normal ordered product. Uh, this computation, I mean, this, this result here, you can deduce from, from this property up here, from this derivation property. You can really so, take- So it's just formal. I mean, that's what you're saying. Uh, yes, I mean, yes. I mean, by formal, if you mean simple, yes. Or uh, <laughs> I think it, it is, I think essentially the statement here, yes. Okay, In terms sorry, of, thanks. With respect to the formal series, yes, if you mean this, yes. Okay. There may be another question. Okay. Um, now, the non commutative case. So I, I, I'm saying it's, um, I will not try to, to make all of this really. Uh, making uh, or appearing uh, completely uh, perfect. It's, it's too difficult and there's not enough time for this. So I start first with what is a non-commutative probability space. So it's not much, but 
an associative algebra that's not necessarily uh, commutative, and it has a, a linear map that maps the unit of the algebra to one. That's that's all that I, so to say, I want to say here. Of course, concrete examples are. It's another it's another story to really uh, think on this level. But for the moment, all that we need is. Um, that we have a unital associative algebra with uh, a linear map. So not that different from what we had before, in fact. And now how to get, how to, how to, to make the connection with uh, this, this vastly different uh, world of non-commutative probability theory. So I, I choose to, uh, to state for me or for the work that we have done, the central observation that is due to uh, Roland Speicher and I think it's around uh, 97, so about the same time, and I think Dirk had his first paper on the Hopf algebra renormalization, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe a, a little bit earlier. That simply says that we do, if if we forget about this, what the computation we did, but we simply ask, so we have a uh, multivariate uh, moment here, so it's phi evaluated on the product of A1 to AN, A1 to AN elements from this algebra A. Then it turns out, so I would like to express this in terms of cumulants. So I, I would like to introduce uh, new uh, objects called then free cumulants. Then I find essentially the same uh, statement. So it's the sum, but this time it's the sum not over all partitions, but what's called non-crossing partitions, set partitions. And then I have the same phenomena. I take each block and then I multiply the cumulant with respect to the, uh, the the entries specified through the entries in this block, and somehow this is the one of the, the, the major insights here that really opens uh, a whole uh, new world in, in terms of combinatorics, non-crossing partitions, uh, etc. So non-crossing partition means really in a very pictorial way that we have to avoid partitions if you if you want to have this pictorial representations of one, two, three, four, and then we have something like this. So this would be a partition that should not be considered. Whereas if I look, if I think about all partitions, so these, these arcs mean the blocks, then I would include this. But here it's 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 not there. And of course, this uh, means also that many more partitions are actually not uh, available in this in this picture here. And uh, so this this is what what defines free cumulants. And, and free cumulants are to do uh, free probability as an example for non-commutative probability what the classical cumulants are to to uh, um, to classical uh, probability so they they vanish uh, uh, mixed cumulants vanish if the, the underlying variables are uh, free and uh, and I think in the same year Speicher and Rudi also considered another example so-called boolean uh, moment cumulant relations. So you have the moments on the left hand side. Now, uh, uh, called Boolean cumulants, and then again, what changes is the, uh, the again the, the set of my uh, set partitions. These are the interval partitions now that are central to uh, Boolean um, independence or Boolean uh, probability, if one wants. So this is how I would like to to motivate. Uh, essentially, the, the non-commutative perspective on, on, on moment cumulant relations and probability. So this is now: what shall we do, or what have, what we what do we have to do to 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 adapt what I did uh, in the classical case in terms of Hopf algebra, shuffle algebra, etc., um, to define to to get the moment cumulant relation and then the uh, corresponding Wick polynomials uh, in this setting when I so to say have to deal with the the question of uh, avoiding certain set partitions that were naturally coming out of this Hopf algebraic computation that I did uh, earlier. Okay, and um, uh, okay, there was. Uh, as an example here, uh, I was uh, I remind you when I introduced the order four moment cumulant relation, and I was saying that there was a three here, and now it's only a two because this particular uh, set partition is not uh, available anymore. So I have only those two at order four. And as a maybe another remark that um, I think it's it's interesting, but uh, with respect to the Wick polynomials, that will appear not not so much. 
there's also the notion of monotone uh, moment cumulant relation or monotone independence, then I still sum over the non-crossing partitions of order n. But here I have a, a coefficient, which is the inverse of the, of the tree factor, also something I think where Dirk uh, has uh, made uh, early on a very important contribution in, in this famous uh, Chen paper. So these are the, the, the tree inverse tree factorials here. The trees uh, are representing the nesting of my uh, non-crossing partition, for instance, something like this. You can, you can associate a, a tree to this or forest. And okay, so um, now let me try to directly how to, to do this, I, I, I would not know, but uh, somehow when you look at the, the question, so how are the corresponding generating series uh, related? Now here, of course, I have to say what I mean by generating series, I have to, to, to do it a little bit more general. So I have, I have here n non-commuting uh, letters, I have n elements from my algebra A, and then I put the corresponding uh, multivariate moments together in this uh, moment generating series here. Now it's not an exponential uh, generating series, it's just words and those coefficients. And the same I can do for the, the free and the Boolean cumulants, but observe here that some of the moment generating series starts with one, whereas and this was also true in the classical case, of course, the uh, um, Cumulant and the Boolean generating series, free cumulant and Boolean cumulant generating series start with n equals one. Okay, so with, with letters here instead, here I have one. Now, this relation of Speicher and Speicher and Rudi can be actually uh, uh, also derived from uh, the relation between the generating series, and this is uh, for the free case, this is this particular fixed point type. Uh, relation between the, the, two, the two generating series. You have the moment series on the one side and the cumulant series on the other side. But here you see that I have to uh, substitute a different set of letters where I take now the, I call the letter ZI being the letter WI, but now I multiply the whole uh, moment generating series into it. So this is a priori a very complicated uh, uh, operation here but it delivers at the end this moment cumulant relation we have observed. In the Boolean case, it's much simpler. I have that the moment generating series is one plus then simply the product of the uh, Boolean cumulant generating series time again, the, the moment series. And I think an interesting uh, remark is the following that I think Tretanovich in 1980 uh, in, a, in a short paper on, on planar field theory, planar quantum field theory, observed that if you want to understand the relation between generating functions for the full and uh, uh, full, uh, full and connected, I forgot connected here, sorry, full and connected planar Green's function. So here I have the, the full Green's functions with this um, dotted blob here. Uh, relation here, which simply means, okay, if, if I want to organize my uh, my, uh, Feynman, my planar Feynman graphs into uh, connected components, okay, I, I have to always avoid crossings of the legs. And so, which means I can go into these little spaces here, right? When you look at this, in fact, um, then you can see somehow the, the Hopf algebraic structure is already present here, if, if you believe me. I will try to, to do this. So we need, we need something a little bit larger to deal with this uh, phenomenon. And the, one that, the, the way we do this is using the double tensor algebra. So we need an extra tensorial structure. Here again, so I take the uh, tensor algebra with unit over the tensor algebra over my uh, non-commutative probability uh, space. And uh, oh, there's something missing, I think. This is not good. So there should, here there should be a, um, there should be a J one S. I don't know why this, this disappeared. J K S or maybe the S the other way around, doesn't matter. So it's S one to SK. So what, what we have done here is I do essentially unshuffling 
but uh, I so to say I remember where I have extracted those sequences or letters that I put on the left hand side. So I follow essentially the same prescription. So I take, for instance, here this word with six letters. I take the set uh, S, two, four, and five. And when I extract uh, these uh, letters, then A, S is A, two, A, four, and A, five. This is what I have here. I cannot access my pointer since I have this and I have to click on it, then uh, it will disappear. Um, and on the other hand, once I have extracted those uh, letters and uh, subwords, then I'm left with this expression here, which is just a one, then this bar a three, and this bar a six. Okay, which you can also maybe represent this way here. I have extracted this letter together with this uh, sequence of letters, and um, this is the core product that I defined on this double tensor algebra. And in fact, you can show that this gives a non-commutative, non-co-commutative uh, connected graded uh, bi-algebra and therefore a Hopf algebra. More, uh, more interesting is the fact that I can split this co-product and it's splitting is, is, is very simple. I simply say uh, that I want uh, one in this set S that I extract to define the word AS or I say explicitly I do not want to have one in there. Okay, so this is simply the splitting that I prescribe. The sum is obviously uh, delta. Now this has some implications. And these are as follows. If I again go to the dual side and I define my uh, convolution product, I've stated here again in terms of this uh, new uh, co-product I defined, but I transfer also the splitting. So I get two extra binary operations, this uh, left and right operations. So in principle, I can say, okay, this associative product here, non-commutative splits into a sum of those two binary operations. Then it turns out that this together, this left and right operation, in fact, defines what is a non-commutative shuffle algebra. And these are the shuffle relations. There are three of them. It's also what's called a Denby form algebra after Lode. And uh, as a remark, we had this already available in the, in the commutative setting, but then it's a little bit less interesting. There's only one operation because I have this particular relation between these two uh, half shuffle co-products. And uh, so I could, I could already have started this introducing here. Now with this extra layer of structure available, uh, we can do the same we did before. So first, we have to, to extend our map phi one step further onto the double tensor algebra. This is what I have done uh, here. And I, in fact, so I have to say how I see it in, in, in relation to this extra uh, tensor product. And I want it to be a character. So it should respect this uh, algebraic structure. And then somehow what we find out is that if I start with such a group like uh, element phi, then I can find three different infinitesimal characters such that I can phi write as this exponential, as this right uh, uh, half shuffle fixed point equation, and I call this the right half shuffle uh, exponential. Of course, it's, uh, it's a little bit to, to discuss why I call these exponentials. And of course, I can also define. Uh, the infinitesimal character corresponding to the original exponential defined with respect to the associative product. And there are a couple of remarks that I would say are interesting. There's on the one hand, I can also everything express in terms of the proper exponentials. And if I want to think of uh, the inverses, then I see that this in inverting those uh, left and right half shuffle exponentials uh, means essentially flipping from a left to a right and then putting a minus here. So these are non-trivial relations on the level of shuffle algebra that are quite useful if you want to really do computations here. And uh, what you can show is that with this with this uh, result, so with these three um, infinitesimal characters uh, available and these fixed point equations and the original um, exponential, I can, or we can derive uh, these moment cumulant relations simply as, a, as an exercise in computing or evaluating such a series of uh, left or right iterated, uh, left or right half shuffles uh, on the word uh, W. So, I mean, here again, this is a result that comes out from this com particular computation with those uh, half shuffle operations. Okay, so it's on one hand, the free case with the left, right half shuffle, 
with the left half shuffle and the Boolean case with the right half shuffle. Sorry, I should go like this. And uh, as a remark, the actual exponential gives what's called the monotone moment cumulant relations, but I won't go into this. Now, um, I think I should speed up a little bit. Okay. Uh, um, what I wanted to say is now, okay, let's continue with this uh, program and uh, do the same as we did, as we did in, the, uh, in the classical uh, case and look at this particular operation of taking the identity convoluted into the inverse of this uh, map phi. And as I said now, uh, phi is the one, so to say, is this, is this character that, that goes all the way back to the original non-commutative probability space we were considering. And here now I, I define again uh, a map that is defined on a double tensor algebra. And um, I, can, I can also invert this simply by multiplying from the right with phi. Then in fact, I find the identity written as this product of my, of what I call the free wig map or the, the corresponding free wig uh, polynomials uh, convoluted with phi. Now, a couple of uh, observations um, is uh, the following. So W is multiplicative. So it respects the, uh, this, uh, the, the, the product on the double tensor algebra. That's what I've indicated here. Now, um, um, uh, it's also centered which means again, if I evaluate, if I take the expectation or if I evaluate my, uh, my map phi on, on such a polynomial that comes out of, of, of this computation up here, then this is essentially zero if evaluated on a non-trivial uh, word. And uh, I had it already uh, earlier in the classical context. If I define this partial A simply in terms of an uh, infinitesimal character that's one only if it sees the letter A, then essentially zero on, on any other words or on, on bar products of words with uh, other words. And I define partial A like this. So again, I have my co-product here. I decompose my uh, word or my element from the double tensor algebra according to this uh, prescription here. And this essentially means I look for the letter A and if the letter A is there, then since I have extracted it, it's, it's eliminated and where I have extracted it, I put a bar. This is now uh, the rule here. That's what I've tried in these, with these three examples. And here you can see now, if I extract this letter A, then I have to put a bar here. So the, this, this derivation applied to this word here, W1, whatever prefix, A, then W2, whatever suffix, then I put a bar here when I extract the letter A. And if I take, for instance, a word with two A's, then I get the sum. So it has a property of a derivation. That uh, if I apply it to what I call a big polynomial, then this is the same as first applying this derivation and then applying the big polynomial. That's what I try to, to say here. And uh, here are a couple of the first three uh, free big polynomials. So this uh, terminology is essentially due to, to Ancelevich called this these polynomials. This, his way of deriving it is, is rather different, but these the resulting polynomials, he called them free big polynomials. And maybe here are the, the places where they, they differ from at order three, for instance, they differ from the classical big polynomials. This is here. As you can see somehow here, you would expect the inverse of phi applied to the, to the subword A1, A3. But since we have this particularity of this bar that comes in um, through this uh, co-product, that's not the case. And the same here, instead of a six, in the classical case, we have only a five here. Okay? This is all due to this particular form of this uh, co-product. Which, which makes sure that we essentially work with, within the context of non-crossing partitions, but here purely seen on the level of word algebra. And uh, you can also compute, as I said, uh, the inverse. The inverse means essentially flipping. So if phi was 
given like this, but the alphas are essentially the free cumulants. And I take the inverse and I have to flip the uh, half shuffle exponential, I have to put a minus sign here. And so if, if, I, if I go to the definition of this W here, this was phi inverse. And if you do this computation, then you find this expression here. That's, that's clear from the construction of this uh, co-product. You extract the word AS, so this is the tensorial part. And then you have those coefficients, which means evaluating this character on those uh, subsequences. Now, if you work this out and you really look at what it means to work with those uh, right half shuffles with the uh, free cumulants with minus sign, then you recover a, a theorem by uh, Anchilovich that has that gives an explicit expression of those free big uh, polynomials in terms of free uh, cumulants. Okay, but this follows from this computation here uh, quite uh, straightforwardly. Now, uh, now we have these polynomials. They somehow follow the same program from a top algebraic point of view than we did in the, in the classical case. But one could ask why not looking at the same construction in the Boolean setting. That's what I've tried to do here. Because if I just do this computation now expressing phi in terms of Boolean cumulants, not much will change. I'm just rewriting the free big polynomials in terms of the, the Boolean uh, um, cumulants. And uh, this is, is interesting, but maybe not quite what we want. Instead, what you can show is that you can express the free big polynomials in such a way that the Boolean cumulants appear like this. Okay, so uh, the proof is, is computational. You, you have a certain recursion that is satisfied by the, the free big polynomials. And you also need, and this is a hint at something also quite interesting, that among those cumulants, there are interesting relations. So I can express the free cumulants in terms of the uh, Boolean cumulants through this um, half shuffle adjoint action, if you want. So there's a nice Lee theoretic perspective on, uh, on the level of, 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 of these infinitesimal uh, characters. They are, they are Lee or pre Lee elements, in fact. And this together here allows me then to express it, my free big polynomials in this form here. And it's this part inside here, I call it a W prime. So it's the identity minus the identity left half shuffle beta that define in fact the Boolean uh, Vic uh, polynomials. Okay, so it's, I call it like this, I call it the Boolean Vic map. This gives the, the Boolean Vic uh, polynomials. So again, Anchilovich told us how they look like. Here we deduce them from this, uh, from this approach uh, in shuffle hop algebra. And uh, what you can show is there again, what's called centered. So if I evaluate phi on uh, the image of such a, a Boolean big um, map, uh, so a Boolean big polynomial, then this is essentially zero if evaluated on it. Which work is polynomials are related. So here I'm saying, okay, the Boolean big polynomials can be expressed in terms of the free big polynomials by uh, this uh, operation, the left half shuffle operation with phi. And uh, so what we what we see here is in fact, so I get my free big polynomials by taking the identity and then operating with the actual convolution product uh, from the right with the inverse of my uh, character phi. Then I get the, um, Boolean Vick polynomials by acting on my free Vick polynomials in terms of uh, my uh, character phi. Here's the inverse, here's phi, but and here's also this left half shuffle versus the full shuffle product. And so all of this actually can be understood that these big polynomials are a result of, of the right action of the group of characters on the space of linear maps over the tensor algebra. Right. This is uh, this is via the convolution product and this uh, left half shuffle. And uh, just as a remark, uh, if I would instead now operate on my uh, Boolean big um, polynomials with another uh, character or state, it's the inverse. So somehow I imagine I have a, another state available. 
then I get what uh, and or what is generally called conditionally free big polynomials. So this, there's a nice way of, of linking those uh, different uh, big polynomials in non-commutative probability. Something that's not really obvious here, at least it's not clear to me, is how to, to deal with the monotone, uh, the monotone side of this picture. And uh, okay, this is the final remark, I believe. Uh, I can again also define a new big, new product in terms of those uh, big maps. And then I have this particular property here. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. And a belated happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Kurush. Uh, other questions for Kurush? Then uh, either put your hand up if or, or speak if you can speak already. Um, I just had one quick question. When you go, when you def talked about the inverse of the left or right exponential, that, that the left and right swaps, and you have to take the negative of the argument. I think it was yes. like four or five slides before. I mean, what happens if I want to write the inverse as the same exponential of something? I mean, basically you're saying that it's not trivial anymore to, to find the inverse by just negating it. Um, uh, you mean, uh, yes, I mean, if, if, if I really want to say, what is the inverse of this with respect to the convolution product? Yeah. Then, uh, in fact, uh, I find this, yes, it's, it's maybe less, I mean, in some sense, it's nice, but it's not as simple as just putting a minus sign in the argument of the exponential. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's just a fact of life. Uh, thank you. We have a question of uh, David Broadhurst. Okay. Um, yes, my, my question is related to um, work by uh, Bedrag Sivitanovich and uh, Peter Schaubach back in the 80s, which you referred to yes. on uh, planar field theory. And the distinctive message that I remember from that work is that they said, whereas you have exponentials in normal field theory, in uh, planar field theory, you have continued fractions. Yes. Uh, and when I looked at your work with Frederic, I didn't see any reference to continued fractions. Did they somehow get lost? Well, at least, at least the way we, we look at it or we work with it, yes, somehow. But uh, you can solve this, this fixed point equation in terms of, of continued fractions, yes. But I did not know how, how this would enter this, this program that we, that we follow uh, in this work. But uh, it's also true that I haven't really thought too much about it. But it's, it's something that somehow we have not picked up. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more question by Ivan Brunet. Yes. Speak, Ivan. Hi. Hi, Kurush. I think it was at the very last end of your talk. You mentioned that you don't have any formula for the monotone uh, version, just for the Boolean. Uh, do you have a make progress? Uh, no, no. I mean, uh, it's, it's, I have no good way of, of how to think about this. So in some sense, if I just, Rush? if I use, yeah, can you hear me? Much. Uh, Eric, can you hear I, me? I, I can hear you. Yeah, I think maybe just Ivan's connection is a bit. Okay. Uh, but, but I can hear you, yes. yes. Okay. Now you can hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, in some sense, the fact that this this is, so to say, the perfect um, description of phi in terms of this classical exponential, if you want, somehow makes it very hard to, to, to compute with it. In, in fact, some of these, these fixed point type equations, left and right half shuffle exponentials that result from this are very, very nice, useful to, to do computations. So if you want, so if you think how, the question would be how to extract from this, so sorry. So I can, I can, of course, write the, those uh, three uh, big polynomials uh, in this form. So I can bring in the, the monotone cumulant. It's more needed that somehow allows to, to extract what could be then the, the, the monotone big polynomials, if, to say so. 
but I don't know how to how to do this. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether people have looked at. Maybe I think I've maybe has saved, but I'm not so sure. It's not so not so clear. Uh, th thank you very much. I, I see no further hands at the moment. So one thing that some people try at conferences is to unmute everyone if they can for a second, and then you can do a little clap. Okay. Um.